Quick message to all our viewers before we get started on today's video. It has come to our attention that over 90% of our regular viewers are not subscribed to the channel. We request you to please click the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can be notified when the next video from Mythlok is out. The bigger the channel gets, the better the quality of videos that we do for you also gets. So please help us make some amazing videos by supporting the channel and clicking that subscribe button. Thank you. Now over to the video. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mythlok with your host Nitin Nair. After exploring some of the more common mythologies in our past couple of episodes, I thought let's look at some of the more rarer or the lesser known mythologies that we have from around the world. And then it caught my eye that we were probably not focusing a lot on certain mythologies that we need to put in extra effort to save so that we can safeguard it for the future generations. One such mythology is Tibetan mythology and the reason we need to save it is more political than anything else. But as you all know, we do not get into the political side of things on this podcast and like to focus on the ancient cultures and the ancient mythologies that are part of a region. We will try and bring out more characters from Tibetan mythology so that we do our part in educating the world on how distinct this region is from the rest of China and Asia in general. In Tibetan mythology today, we will be looking at one of the core animals of the mythology and the region, Druk, the thunder dragon. In addition to being mythical creatures, dragons are also an integral part of the culture and life of the Tibetan people. Like other Asian countries, they play an important role in the spiritual and cultural identity of the region, especially since Tibet is additionally known as a land of snow and dragons. It took a long time before the teachings of Feng Shui and Zen could influence the local traditions of the Tibetan dragon and the people. It is surprising that some elements of Indian folklore such as the Naga have infiltrated the ancient culture of Tibet. This occurred long before the Tang dynasty's influence was felt in the region. The cultural fusion between China and India suggests that Tibetans are more likely to perceive dragons as mythical creatures than their Asian neighbors. The Tibetan dragon is about 40 feet long, which is shorter than its Chinese cousin. Its thinness can be explained by how it adapted to the high altitudes in the region. Its body is also made up of vibrant colors such as orange or red because it doesn't need camouflage. Its eggs are usually laid in snow and its neck and head are smaller than that of the Chinese dragon. The druk is also known as Dug, Drug or Zu. The most common name however is the Tibetan dragon, the thunder dragon or the Bhutan dragon. Bhutan is called Drukyul or the land of druk and Bhutanese leaders are called Drukgyalpo which means the thunder dragon kings. The Tibetan dragon is a solitary creature that has the ability to communicate ideas and discern lies from fiction. According to Tibetan legends, it can also help people understand what is real and is also known to spend time with monks. Although dragons are usually invisible to the human eye, they can still be found carrying a powerful thunderbolt which can be used to awaken people who are in the wrong direction. This is a way to help get them back on track and avoid repeating their false beliefs and actions. As one of the four mythical creatures, the dragon represents power. The dragon thunders in the sky with the sound of compassion that awakens us from delusion and increases what we know through hearing. Thus, it can be said that the dragons bring forth our awareness to things that we cannot see. According to a legend, Sangpa Gyare, who is a well-known meditation teacher and the ancestor of Bhutan's founding father, Zabdrung Nyamgil, was in a village in Nam to establish a spiritual center. During his visit, he was reportedly able to see nine dragons flying across the sky. These creatures were said to have been able to trigger a loud clap of thunder as they moved away. He then named the area after the dragons. 
Due to the importance of dragons in Tibetan culture, people have placed them on various objects such as prayer wheels and prayer flags. They are also commonly found on the roofs of Tibetan temples and traditional houses. The dragon is regarded as a powerful symbol of luck and can help people achieve good fortune. The powerful creatures have been depicted in various forms throughout history. While the Western world is mainly known for featuring dragons in movies and television shows, Asian dragons are also widely seen. They are often depicted in clothing and other products and are believed to bring luck and wisdom to people. Although most Westerners are scared of the evil depiction of dragons in their myths, many Asian people, especially Tibetan people, see them as benevolent and helpful. As you can see, the position of a dragon in the culture of the people of Tibet and Bhutan are extremely high and it is very distinct from the way dragons are perceived in Chinese, Japanese, Korean or any other Asian or Southeast Asian countries. The mythology in itself has a lot of importance given to the mountainous region and the kind of lives that the people lived with the dragons being very close to monks and being very friendly to people, it also symbolizes the fact that a lot of influence has been coming in both from the Chinese side as well as from the Indian side which is seen in the shape and physical attributes of the dragon itself. We will be focusing on a lot more such of mythologies which are finding it hard to survive and hold their own in today's world and until then, this is your host Nitin Naya signing out by reminding you once again that Mythlok is the home of mythology.